In this video, we will explore the intricate anatomy of the accessory nerve, delving into its unique characteristics and vital functions. We'll begin with a brief overview, focusing on the origins of the accessory nerve. In this discussion, we will highlight its dual components, the cranial and spinal parts, elaborating on their distinct roles. Next, we will meticulously trace the complex course of the accessory nerve and examine its anatomical relationships with other structures. Following this, we will conduct an in-depth exploration of the terminal branches of the accessory nerve. Our exploration will then extend to the nerve's connections with other nerves, delving into its functional aspects. This includes a particular emphasis on its role in motor functions. Lastly, we will conclude with a comprehensive summary. Commonly known as the 11th cranial nerve, is a vital component of the human nervous system. It is a paired motor nerve, distinguished by its two distinct divisions, the cranial and spinal divisions, each with specific functions and innovation patterns. The cranial division primarily supplies the muscles of the pharynx and larynx. On the other hand, the spinal division of the accessory nerve is responsible for the motor innervation of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. The accessory nerve's dual functionality underscores its importance in various motor activities. Damage or dysfunction in this nerve can lead to significant impairments. In addition to its primary motor functions, the accessory nerve also has a role in proprioception, providing feedback about the position of the neck and shoulder muscles. The accessory nerve has a unique apparent origin for each division. The cranial part of the accessory nerve, also referred to as the internal ramus, has its apparent origin in the retroolivoi sulcus of the medulla oblongata. This area is situated below the roots of the vagus nerve. In terms of its physical manifestation, the cranial division typically emerges as four or five delicate rootlets. On the other hand, the spinal division, or the external ramus, arises from the upper cervical segments of the spinal cord. Its apparent origin is anterior to the posterolateral sulcus of these spinal segments, typically encompassing the C1 to C5 levels. This part of the nerve emerges through five to six rootlets, which are responsible for its motor functions. The actual origin of the accessory nerve, distinct from its apparent origin, involves two key anatomical regions corresponding to its cranial and spinal divisions. The actual origin of the cranial division is situated in the caudal third of the nucleus ambiguous, a structure located within the medulla oblongata of the brainstem. This specific part of the nucleus ambiguous is responsible for generating the motor neurons that form the cranial part of the accessory nerve. The actual origin of the spinal component of the accessory nerve is found on the lateral surface of the ventral horn of the spinal cord, spanning from C1 to C5 segments of the cervical plexus. This region contains motor neuron cell bodies that give rise to the nerve fibers constituting the spinal part of the accessory nerve. Together, these two nuclei, the caudal part of the nucleus ambiguous and the lateral surface of the ventral horn of the cervical spinal cord, comprise the actual origin of the accessory nerve. The intracranial course of the accessory nerve, encompassing both its cranial and spinal divisions, illustrates the complex journey of this unique cranial nerve. The cranial division of the accessory nerve is relatively small and subtle in its pathway. After originating from the caudal third of the nucleus ambiguous in the medulla oblongata, it proceeds laterally within the cranial cavity. Its path is directed towards the jugular foramen, an essential gateway for the transition of the nerve from its intracranial to extracranial course. During its course, this division is known to unite with the spinal root, thereby contributing to the formation of the trunk of the accessory nerve. This union is crucial as it combines the motor functions originating from both the brainstem and the spinal cord, integrating these functions before the nerve exits the cranial cavity. The spinal division exhibits a unique pathway that begins from the upper cervical segments of the spinal cord. Unlike its cranial counterpart, this division originates outside the cranium. It ascends alongside the spinal cord, within the vertebral column, and makes its way between the denticulate ligament and the posterior roots of the spinal nerves. This passage is significant as it ensures the nerve's protection and proper alignment with other spinal structures. Upon reaching the foramen magnum, the largest opening at the base of the skull, the spinal division enters the cranial cavity. Here, it joins with the cranial division, mirroring its lateral course towards the jugular foramen. 
both divisions, though originating from different locations, converge in their intracranial pathway towards the jugular foramen, marking a critical juncture where they unite and transition to their extracranial course. Within the jugular foramen, the course of the accessory nerve is both intricate and strategically significant. The trunk of the accessory nerve occupies a specific location within the intermediate compartment of the jugular foramen. This foramen, a key opening at the base of the skull, serves as a vital conduit for several cranial nerves and vascular structures. Within the jugular foramen, the accessory nerve maintains a lateral position relative to the vagus nerve. This spatial relationship is important because these nerves, although they have different functions and destinations, share a close anatomical pathway at this juncture. Another significant anatomical relationship within the jugular foramen is that of the accessory nerve with the internal jugular vein. The vein lies anteriorly and medially to the nerve. Upon exiting the jugular foramen, the accessory nerve undergoes a significant division within the parapharyngeal space. This division results in the formation of two primary branches, the internal branch and the external branch, each with distinct pathways and functions. The internal branch of the accessory nerve, one of its terminal branches, is characterized by its unique integration with the vagus nerve. Upon exiting the jugular foramen, the internal branch of the accessory nerve forms a crucial connection with the fibers of the vagus nerve, specifically at the nodose ganglion, also known as the inferior ganglion of the vagus nerve. Once it has merged with the vagus nerve, the internal branch contributes significantly to the innervation of the muscles in the pharynx and larynx. The primary distribution of the internal branch is to the pharyngeal and superior laryngeal branches of the vagus nerve. The pharyngeal branch primarily innervates the pharyngeal constrictor muscles, while the superior laryngeal branch supplies the cricothyroid muscle. Additionally, some filaments from the internal branch of the accessory nerve continue with the trunk of the vagus nerve below the ganglion, contributing to the innervation provided by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This nerve is essential for controlling the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, except for the cricothyroid muscle. The accessory nerve's contribution to the recurrent laryngeal nerve is significant for its role in speech and protecting the airway during swallowing. The external branch of the accessory nerve, also known as the spinal part, has a distinctive course and terminal innervation in the neck. Upon exiting the jugular foramen, the external branch initially runs posteriorly, positioning itself in relation to several key neurovascular structures. As it descends obliquely across the neck, the nerve lies superficial to both the internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve. This superficial course makes it relatively more vulnerable to injury compared to deeper structures. The nerve is generally positioned laterally relative to the internal carotid artery, another major structure in the neck. Relative to the hypoglossal nerve, which has a medial position in the neck, the external branch of the accessory nerve maintains a more lateral trajectory. The primary function of the external branch is the motor innervation of two major muscles, the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. The nerve first innervates the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This innervation occurs as the nerve descends in the neck. It then extends further to innervate the trapezius muscle. The accessory nerve, with its distinct internal and external branches, establishes key connections within the neck. The external branch of the accessory nerve, as it courses through the posterior triangle of the neck, forms important anastomosis with fibers from the cervical spinal nerves, particularly C2 and or C3. This region is a vital area for the convergence of various nerve fibers and serves as a hub for neural communication between the accessory nerve and the cervical spinal nerves. Further along its course, below the trapezius muscle, the external branch continues its pattern of forming anastomosis, this time with fibers from spinal nerves C3 and or C4. On the other hand, the internal branch of the accessory nerve plays a crucial role in the innervation of pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles. This is achieved through its connection with the fibers of the vagus nerve at the level of the inferior ganglion, also known as the nodose ganglion. This integration allows the internal branch to contribute significantly to functions such as swallowing and speech. The accessory nerve, distinguished by its cranial and spinal divisions, plays a vital role in several key functions related to movement and sensory perception. The cranial division of the accessory nerve is instrumental in the innervation of specific muscles in the pharynx and larynx. These muscles are fundamental for the acts of swallowing and speaking, essential functions in daily life. 
This innovation is achieved through the cranial division's integration with the vagus nerve. Impairment of the cranial division can lead to significant clinical symptoms. Patients may experience dysphagia, which is difficulty in swallowing, and dysphonia, which refers to changes in voice quality, including hoarseness or loss of voice. These symptoms can significantly impact a person's quality of life, affecting their ability to eat and communicate effectively. On the other hand, the spinal division of the accessory nerve has a crucial role in motor functions, primarily innervating the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. These muscles facilitate important movements such as turning the head, flexing the neck, and retracting the scapulae. The coordination of these movements is vital for many everyday activities, ranging from simple gestures to complex physical tasks. Impairment of the spinal division can lead to paralysis or significant weakness in these muscles. This can manifest as an inability to turn the head or flex the neck effectively, and a noticeable droop in the shoulder on the affected side due to trapezius muscle weakness. Such impairment can greatly hinder basic movements and postural stability, impacting an individual's ability to perform routine tasks and maintain a normal posture. In conclusion, the accessory nerve, or cranial nerve 11, is an essential component of the human nervous system with a unique structure and dual functionality. It consists of two distinct divisions, the cranial and spinal. The cranial division primarily contributes to the innovation of pharyngeal and laryngeal muscles, playing a crucial role in swallowing and vocalization. The spinal division, on the other hand, innervates the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles, which are pivotal for movements of the head and shoulders, as well as for maintaining posture. Impairment of either division of the accessory nerve can lead to significant functional deficits. Damage to the cranial division can result in difficulties with speech and swallowing, while impairment of the spinal division can cause weakness or paralysis in the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles, affecting head movement and shoulder function.